Let's kick it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to What's New in 2223. Today I thought we'd start at nearly the very beginning, because that's a very good place to start. Now that's all the standard music you're getting out of me today. But I'm going to call this video the Hidden UI video, for reasons that will become clear in about two minutes. So first things first, we're at the logon screen, and it's different from the last build, because now it's no longer HTML, it's now just normal C, like pretty much every other UI in this build of Windows and any build of Windows ever. Yep, it's got the same functionality. If you press the control buttons and the shift buttons, you can change what the button does. And another thing, if you click on the name, now this time, it actually did it. It got the cursor in there. Usually when I click on it, it doesn't put the cursor in there. It usually does that, it sticks like that and there's no cursor in there, and if you press the key when there's no cursor in there Oh, I guess I pressed... Uh, there you go, a key that doesn't correspond to any account anyway you get a nice ding! Yep, and if you don't type in here while it's open you will get the hint, as I just didn't click on that, it just came up Yep, and if you get the password wrong a couple of times for... what, well, six times? then it free the logon screen freezes and I think it actually crashes because well it doesn't crash it just locks up the computer because well I don't know why but there's no as you can see the mouse isn't moving the, the cursor isn't moving I can't press anything on the keyboard the keys don't work so yeah it completely locks up the computer and you have to go back and restart it don't worry about that in the background, you'll see that in a minute. And if I log on normally this time, then you can see that the cursor didn't go into the, the password box, the edit box. So if I log on normally this time, we get the found of hardware wizard. I uninstalled this before I restarted the computer and started doing this. And as you can see, this is new for this build. It doesn't exist in the last build, which is why it's new and it's pretty much the final XP layout of it. Now what it also does is, well what it does have is a hidden button which will show us some more information. So what we have to do is let's move this down here and the window's there but it's hidden so I have to enable it and you can see there it's called resources. You can also do it by pressing Alt and E and it brings up the normal device manager resources dialog page but tab page and it lists all the physical computer resources that this device would be using and as you can see that the, vid the button is actually there I will show you and there you go it's right here in the bottom corner I don't think this actually ever is ever shown. It might be for certain device classes or in certain later builds, but I've never actually seen it, so I don't think that's ever shown. If I leave this dialog up, the found no hardware wizard, you can see the first bug that we've encountered in this build. And that is down here in the bottom with the icon rendering. As you can see it's all dark and it's meant to be the normal Windows logo. And it's not, it's a black mess. And that's not unique to this, it actually happens if you open WordPad as well. There you can see it's all got like a blue sort of V type shape on it. As you can see in the last build, it's actually completely fine in there, so that's been introduced since then. Now we've already seen the log off screen fail once in this build already, and when given a second chance to shine, it doesn't fare any better. This time it's in response to fast user switching support, which is kind of in this build. Now this is the first build of Windows which actually has the terminal server installed. 
by default so you can have multiple logon sessions if you have a remote desktop which is also in this build you can have multiple persons log onto the, logged onto the computer at once but the fast user switching support requires this key here it's in WinLogon which is HK Local Machine Software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, Logon, anything else that I can possibly think of so geez that's a long key yep anyway if you go to the allow multiple TS sessions key and you make that non-zero then in when you log off I'll get rid of that mouse that's another thing. when you go to log off usually what happens is you get a dialogue in the middle here and it says log are you sure you want to log off and you can click log off or you can click cancel but when you set that key and you click to log off nothing there's no mouse the, the keys don't work on the keyboard there's nothing it all completely sort of hangs and crashes so you can't log on as anybody else even if you you know even if you wanted to you can't even log back onto your own user session because there's no well, no keyboard support, the mouse doesn't work, you can't no, alt F4, even control alt delete which I can just about click on yep that doesn't do anything either so yeah your only recourse then is to reset so that's 0 out of 2 for the new logon screen now as I said this is the first build with terminal server installed by default and that means it comes with all of its plumbing and I mean all of its plumbing. If you look here, there's a myriad of new exe files. This is all in green here, all the new files. All the myriad of exe files are changed, change logon, change port, change user. There's a myriad of log off, register. There's just loads and loads of exe files that support it. Q process, Q app server. And most of them are pretty much, well, I wouldn't say useless because they're supposed to have some function, but most of them are pretty much just pretty rubbish. If we look at one of them, it's called debug trace. Now usually what happens if you don't know how to use a, a command line app, you type in the name of it and then you do slash question mark and it gives you the nice listing of help and tells you what it does and what it's all about and that. Now here we get switches but it doesn't give you any inclination whatsoever as to what it does. It just says, you know, I'm called debug trace, you enter a name or an ID, a name or what. An ID of what, who knows, but it's pretty useless and some of the other functions some of the other X's aren't that much better if we look at change.exe and see what change logon port user what what does that mean so most of these utilities are pretty ropey to start off with I think most of them actually this ropey in final XP so hmm don't know what's been happening there. Maybe the terminal server team don't want people using their utilities. One of the main utilities that comes in this build though, which is actually quite useful, is MSTSC, and that is the terminal services client, otherwise known as the remote desktop thing where you can log in on another computer and use that computer without actually being there. So if we connect to XPvert, which is a virtual machine of XP SP3 that I've got set up, and if we connect, there you go, see it works fine, we get the logon screen and Bob's already logged on so I just had to set up a user for that and XP only has a one interactive session at a time limit obviously so I think I'll log off as Bob there we go. and here we can see that I just set up this user so it's doing all the first time setup and there we go, we've got proper XP running in the terminal services client, so it works completely fine. I said this isn't a new technology for Windows or this build, the terminal services client. Terminal services has been around since about NT4 time, but it was a separate build of Windows, I think it was a separate product, like NT4 with terminal services. And then it was a 2000 add on, so it's not a new technology, it's just new to the base operating system. And if we get rid of this now, goodbye. We'll be seeing that wallpaper soon enough for ourselves, rather than pick back in on a different. Well, I'll pick back in on the VM for it. So yeah, that's one of the main things for it. And you can connect from XP to here, 
using the remote desktop terminal services thing because the, the protocol is not backwards compatible but it's forwards compatible so this uses version 5 of the protocol to go to XP but XP uses version 5.1 of the protocol and 5.0 of the protocol doesn't understand that so you can't connect from there to here but you can connect from here to there now as I showed the Admu hardware wizard earlier I think it's only fair I should show device manager because that also has been slightly updated so if we scoot into something here and we see it's got the same three tabs it normally has from 2000 but now on the driver tab we have the rollback driver button and these are all the same and the four buttons are now vertical instead of the horizontal three we had along here in 2000 so it's pretty much now at its, well it's pretty much now as it would be in XP except the most eagle-eyed amongst you which I've tried saying about four times now and can't get out the most eagle-eyed will notice that the details tab is missing but it's missing but it can be brought back so what we have to do is set an environment variable and that is dev image yet show not sure show show details set that to a non-zero value then if we open the device manager again get it right this time now if we open it up again see now we have the details tab and it's how you know and love it from XP full of information that you don't know and I don't know what it means but yep it's all there all the stuff listed in the registry that the in file installs and tells, it, tells Windows about and yep so the details tab it'll probably be coming up in a later build when it'll be there by default but for now you have to it's hidden following on from the theme of the video, the hidden UI and you have to enable it with the dev MGR show details environment variable another thing in this build which should, which houses even more hidden UI can be seen in Explorer if we go to well first thing I just want to show you this if you go to view and arrange icons if you look in the status bar now where it says contains commands for arranging items in the windows and we mouse over these it doesn't actually give the right help strings it's all the error strings are actually there instead of the arranges by name, arranges by size everything yep, you can see auto arrange works just the rest of them which are new, the showing groups from which is new for this build and all the others don't actually have the right strings there don't know why that is but anyway onto the hidden UI and that it can be triggered by going to any file, right clicking and going to publish now this brings up the web publishing wizard, wizard and you can send it this file, I presume it sends these to like a online store, I would have done send it to an online store although it says a new folder in the following MSN community so I don't know if MSN ever stored files or not but if it did then this is probably where it would send them now the hidden UI is actually the first page of this wizard as we see it just went straight to this hidden it didn't have the, the normal welcome page so what we can do again is if I bring up the font of all knowledge about windows anyway that's by plus plus and if I move this up enough so I can see the button button and it's the web publishing wizard tell you what, it's probably easy if I just find the oh there it is, back Two, one. so there we go, we've enabled the back button now and we get the first page of the wizard the picture on the left is chopped off halfway down and the web publishing wizard helps you share files with others you can use the wizard to send files through your local network or internet so that people can easily review them with their web browsers and you can learn more about it, we can press the tutorial button and if we press the tutorial button nothing happens so 
I know the otherwise as to what it does, but the UI in this is also not quite complete. There's only the NetPLWiz test provisor because it's called the NetPLWiz the DLL that this dialog resides in. Yep, so we select that. And then we get this page, which is obviously a test page. The title, I don't know what's happened to that, I think it's they sent ASCII to a Unicode control, which makes it rendering the null font because it doesn't have the the proper glyphs in the font. But we can set the caption, well, apparently the button doesn't work. And these enable the buttons on the bottom. So if we set buttons, they see that enables. There we go. Now this one actually does, this page actually, you can enter stuff into it. And it does influence the outcome of the wizard. So if I set that to Google, uh, fancy name, uh, fancy band, the web drive. I have no idea what this what should be going in these fields, but I'm just making it up, and it seems to work fine. So if I make it up and the best, I would take that. The new folder button doesn't do anything, and you can click next. And apparently it will create a new MSN project and copy files to new, your new website. So maybe an MSN project is just like a GeoCities website at the time. And the type link there doesn't do anything. Likewise, when you click finish, it goes away and does stuff. Well, it goes away and looks like it's doing stuff, but it doesn't actually do anything. It looks through the... the let me get this right. It looks through all the... Network places which you've set up or haven't, as it is, and it looks through them to see if what you typed in as the folder name actually exists there. And then I can't remember what else it does, but it doesn't actually send any files or copy anything or anything like that. So, as it is, it's just the, the UI, it doesn't actually have any functionality yet. Now, another thing you may have noticed while that was going on. Was. I didn't plan it like this, but it happened, so I'll show you it. Is in the corner down here, we got the exclamation point in the blue circle, and you can click on it, and it shows all the hidden icons from the taskbar. Now, this debuted, now this supposedly debuts in the next build, but the icons hidden in the tray can actually be enabled in this build if I can remember where it goes. You have to set a registry entry because it's not in the UI yet, even though that if I show you there is some UI for the tray in the notifications here. But this never gets populated, nothing ever nothing sends any items to this so it never gets populated. And even if you untick that and go OK if you come back to it it stays on so you can't turn it off. And that, that button also does nothing. So it's pretty much just a dummy UI, this and never actually does anything. But yeah, if I go back to enable tray, I think that's in current u mouse acting up again. Current user software Microsoft Windows current version Explorer. I don't think it's in advanced, I think it's just an explorer. Yep, if you go here and then add this entry, enable auto tray then that's what it does. This is the same it's the same entry as it is in XP, so they decided on that very early. And what it does is as you just saw it collapses all the tray entries you don't use and puts the blue notification icon there. And you can click on it and it brings up a menu of the icons. You can click on them to show them. Now it's enabled but as you can have you seen as you've seen it took until this part of the video for it to show up that's because the timer for it is actually set at 15 minutes so it only hides the icons every 15 minutes now we've already seen some hidden UI in this build but oh you better believe there's even more of it and we've already seen the dialogue that it's in and that's here the start and taskbar property is the taskbar page now this has been augmented with the group items button which actually does now group items and that's about it, but you know, not meaning to be outdone in the hidden UI states. This actually has two bits of hidden UI. If I just get rid of that, so I can 
find the window. There we go. That one. He's already here. Oh, I need a different window now since he's running the message loop for the icons on the bottom. If I exit that, they'll disappear, so that won't help. I've already clicked something there, just a small icon button. No, no, yep. So now if I, oh, I need to find the window handle first, as right. you can see here there's a button which says clicking on start displays the start page, so that's the first one we need to show, and that is 11092, and as you can see this one comes up at the top of the list, it's another checkbox. Now in 2250, if you remember, well if you remember, we haven't done it yet, but some of the videos will show you if you press Alt and D and then you press spacebar or enter then you can press apply and then you get the brand new start menu well pressing Alt and D is what this check what this actually checks it's this one so if I press Alt now you'll see that the D is underlined so pressing D will tick the box and you can apply it it doesn't do anything in this build so I can apply it all I want and it's still the same old start menu but yeah that's the if you press Alt and D that's the one it checks and there's also another button which is around here somewhere there it's restore defaults so if I and it comes down here and it's restore defaults button and what it does what it says on the tin you click on it and oh it doesn't do anything except if you uncheck these things all of them then you click it it checks three of them. It's always on top, show clock, and personalized menus. So the defaults are considered um, the movable taskbar that's meant to be locked. Is the default, and obviously the ungroup, the non-grouped items as well. So yeah, there's two more bits of hidden UI in here. Like I said, even if you check it and go OK, it still doesn't do anything. Another thing this build does before any other is recognize the difference between personal and professional versions. As you've got Windows Whistler Professional, so there must be a, perf a personal version. And you can enable the personal string by going to regedit. It's already open here, isn't it? Go to regedit, and then we have to go to shut all these up. It's key local machine. software, we need system. Now it's actually set in current control set control product suite options even product options and it's here product suite. What you need to do is add personal string to this so type in personal but it has to be in Unicode so you need the zeros after the actual ASCII bytes. So if that's the end of the terminal server string so it needs to be here just before the end. And you've got P E R S O N A L and then we'll add in the nulls afterwards. You have to press zero once, you don't have to press it twice. And then we need to add on the null byte and then at the end we need another null byte to signal the end because the strings are delimited by single Unicode nulls. So you need two Unicode nulls at the end to signal the end of the list. Yep, that's that. And if you set OK here, then it goes, whoa, what are you trying to do? You're not licensed to have a personal version, You're, you've got a professional version. And it says, system has detected tampering with your registered product type. This is a violation of your system software license. Tampering with product type is not permitted. So that says that in no uncertain terms. But there is a way around this. If you go here to current control set and then whatever the highest number is, so this one's two, sometimes it's like three or four depending on what you've been doing. If you go there and then go to the same key and go to the same here and then type the same thing in, so it's to be there, doesn't it? If we go OK, then we get obviously it becomes terminal server and personal. So then what we need to do is close everything. Turn off computer and obviously then go to restart, which will 
restart the computer. Then, when it's restarting, we have to hold F8 to bring up the start up menu. Then go to last known good configuration. Then in here, touch press enter, press L, and then press enter. And that'll take it to the last known good configuration, and that'll copy over the highest current control set number. Remember, it's current control set 002. That'll copy that over to the current one. So even though we couldn't um, edit the actual product options directly, since we've done that, it's copied that over there. And now, as you can see in the bottom corner, we've got Windows Whistler Personal. Which will be more easily seen here. You see, it's Windows Whistler Personal now. So if you try going back into the original current control set without the numbers on it, and try editing it, trying to try and delete personal, then it'll shower you again for trying to delete personal. But you can just get it back by deleting it from the highest current control set number and then going back to last known good and doing that and it'll go back to professional. But it doesn't actually change anything, it just um, there's one bit in the operating system which it uses to identify with, if it's using like a server build or whatever, it just adds on a bit to that. So everything can it can check for it to see if it's personal or professional, but I don't think anything actually changes its behaviour based on that just yet. That's going to about do it for part one of this. I've split it up into two videos because no, I don't think even the most ardent Windows fan wants to see a straight hour of this. So I split it up into two videos, so I hope to see you again in part two.